what's going on already. We did a product chat today. We took the most delicious cornflakes you can get and went through several steps to take the most awesome product chat that you can think of. Let me show you what we did today. Shooting cornflakes turned out a lot messier than we thought. When we started out, we had to pick up the camera and the lens. We wanted a camera that was capable of slow motion because we wanted to show the rotation around the core. We went for the Sony A7S III, one, because this is what we had on hand, but two, because it is capable of 200 FPS under full HD settings. For a lens, we picked up the Sigma 70mm f2.8 macro. We did this because we wanted to get a lot of coverage. We wanted to be able to shoot close a little bit further away. We also wanted to show the details in the delicate cornflakes flakes, cornflakes, cornflakes flakes. Anyways, we wanted to show a lot of detail and the macro lens allowed us to do this. We also needed some shots to break in and out of, so we went for the Lawa periscope lens. This is a specialized lens with a unique look and you can get some really incredible shots with it. Everything looks so big when you get so close. Using two lenses, we were able to create several different looks and those will help us when we come to composite the final shot. One of the things I like with food shots is when you spin around the food and see everything going down. We use the Digital Photo V360 spinner for that and it's this device here. The camera goes here, a backdrop goes here, and it just spins around whatever object you want. When you're shooting food, soft light is your best friend. We use two small ring lights, the 450 and the 220. Those are bicolor and those gave us plenty of light even through the diffusion to light our shot. One thing you have to be conscious about is that the camera is gonna be spinning, so the light is gonna come from different directions depending on where the camera is currently on the spin arc. We tried several bowls, and for reflection management, we opted for a slightly matte bowl made out of wood. Of course, one way to handle this is to put your lights on the spinner, but we wanted some very big and soft lights, so those soft boxes, they don't fit on the spinner. On the other hand, we did put a backdrop on the spinner, so we have total control of this blue, very happy background. When you're working with a spinning ring like this, you can't have any cables going off the camera, so we had to go fully wireless. The camera was connected to a Holyland Mars 300, shooting out into an awesome monitor. That allows us to nail focus on the hard shot and make sure that whatever we did shot correctly. We set the camera to SMQ. Even though we shot high FPS, we were able to see slow motion in real time on the playback monitor. One thing that can really show you motion is to have a static element in the shot. For example, the ball. And this is how you can see how the camera spins around the ball. If you want to take it up a notch, you can add some moving elements like chocolate syrup, strawberries, or whipped cream. Doing this kind of a video is not trivial. Some stuff you'll have to shoot again and again and again and again. Sometimes because you're out of focus, sometimes the biting was off, sometimes the movement wasn't right. You just have to flow with it. For focusing, we close the aperture a little bit and we set our hand to the focusing pole. If you do have moving objects like this, uh, you know, this, this could end up pretty messy. So make sure you use some drapes or nylon bags to cover everything that you don't want to get spills over it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This, this is Udi Tivos from DIYphotography.net. Hit the like button, the share button, just hit all the buttons on the screen, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.